Okay, great. So it looks like everyone's signing in okay. So welcome to this Bright Pearl Insights webinar. In this webinar, we'll be covering ways to increase your revenue and customer loyalty through business intelligence. I'm sure everyone's going to have plenty of questions as we go through, so I encourage you to use the question box and we'll do our very best to answer them afterwards in the Q&A. So in terms of the content for this webinar, we're going to go through some introductions shortly. Then we'll go into some of the challenges that are faced by retailers when tracking their key performance indicators. We'll also be exploring which key performance indicators should be tracked, and more importantly, the implications of those KPIs for the business and how these guide decision making. We'll talk through the reasons for the Bright Pearl and Manubo partnership, and then I'll hand over to Ingmar. And we'll also get a chance to look at some real life examples of these KPIs with fellow brands and explore what reports they've used to become such a successful company. We'll finish up and then you'll get a chance to ask any questions that you may have in the Q&A. So my name's Joe and I'm the Customer Success Manager at Bright Pearl and I'm really pleased to, able to, uh, to be able to introduce Will Miles, Managing Director at Velo Brands. Hello. And Hi. We've, we've also got Ingmar and Dominic from Manubo on the line. Hi there. Hello everybody. So let's begin first of all with the challenges that retailers face tracking their key performance indicators. Retailers really need to make decisions that are justified and that have data to back them up. The problem is that in many cases this data is often stored across multiple different systems. So it might be that you have an accounting system, a separate stock management system and a separate CRM. So extracting meaningful data across these three is going to be a real challenge. Once you've extracted that data, the challenge really becomes about turning it into something that you can act on. You then need to decide which KPIs are most relevant for your business and use them to benchmark your success going forward. Finally, business intelligence software is often out of reach to SMB retailers, which makes all these points more challenging. So let's talk a little bit about business intelligence software. To give you some context around the figures from Bain & Company that you can see on your screen, Around $14 billion is spent on business intelligence software each year worldwide. According to the research, adopters of business intelligence software are on average five times faster at making business decisions. 74% of businesses who do not adopt uh, business intelligence software are negatively impacted. So the next five slides that we're going to look at are going to be on the 10 KPIs that retailers should, should be tracking. With the obvious exception of cash in the bank, all of these KPIs can be tracked using Bright Pearl Insights. Firstly, we can take a look at revenue. So you need to be able to track if you're performing to your targets and budgets, and as a result of that, what are the actions that you need to take if you aren't hitting this number? Finally, does your revenue stream support your cash flow requirements, and have you got enough for your financial commitments? If not, where is it that you can free up some cash? Secondly, we have product profit. Are your products achieving the correct level of profitability to support the business? Are your markdowns appropriate for special offers and sale items? Or do you need to get better cost prices and explore new suppliers? Which products should you stop selling and which should you buy more of? Just because it's an item that you sell lots of doesn't necessarily make it a most profitable product. So stock cover. Have you purchased too much stock in relation to your sales? Would markdown on some products allow you to turn over your stock more effectively? What if your business is overperforming? It's a nice problem to have, but you need to buy more stock. Sell through allows you to see if your stock is moving through the business at the right rate. This is going to dictate your rate of reordering. Markdown percentage. So what products can you afford to mark down? It might be that you have too many concurrent promotions running and it's eating into your profit margin. What's the breakdown of your new customers as well compared to your existing ones? New customers obviously cost a lot more to acquire through marketing expenses and the right balance needs to be struck between the two. Earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization. Sales of course is a metric that we want to track but it's the profit that's really relevant to us so this needs to be tracked in relation to business costs. Conversion rate. Are you converting your customers to buyers? If this conversion rate is low, what's stopping you from converting? What percentage of customers are abandoning their car? Some figures suggest this is as high as 75% on average. So how does your business stack up? Returns. So you might be selling your goods really well. 
but you have to be sure that they aren't all coming back and costing you money. Reverse logistics aren't just expensive, but they can damage your reputation as well. And with review sites and a huge emphasis on customer feedback, this can be really damaging. So cash in the bank is really keeping tabs on your cash flow, and it's the only metric we've discussed here that won't be tracked by Bright Pearl Insights. You need to have clear visibility of what's coming and going. So, of course, this isn't an exhaustive list that retailers should be tracking. Every business is unique, of course, and as such, they may want to track some slightly different KPIs, but most businesses will have these in common. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hang over, hand over to Ingmar, who's going to talk through the partnership, and we can take a look through the app. So Ingmar, I'm going to hand over to you now. Perfect. Thank you. Let me just... Yep. There we are. So uh, thank you for uh, giving the opportunity to present here shortly. Um, let me first uh, give you some information about Minubo and the partnership with Brightpo. Minubo has been uh, founded by Nextel, which has been a BI specialist for um, e-commerce retailers for uh, a long time already, typically working in specialized projects, uh, long-term projects for uh, large enterprises in the market. Um, our mother company, Nextel, has distilled down the experience in all these big projects which have, uh, we have been doing for almost 10 years now, almost a decade and uh, standardized um, most of it because we have seen from experience that it is possible to standardize these uh, most of the most of the relevant parts um, to be able to offer a very high class e-commerce bi to small and medium sized businesses which by that are able to compete with the real big ones who can invest hundreds of thousands or sometimes millions and uh, personal for long time projects so that is how Minubo has been developed over time, over uh, several years already, uh, with uh, quite a big team. Um, we have uh, been very lucky to uh, um, get Brightpo as a partner because um, the Brightpo system offers a lot of uh, figures ready to use. We have a highly performing API with Brightpo, which we can, which we can um, use to collect the data and um, prepare them. Allow them, uh, allowing us to present all the KPIs and insights that a customer would need together with the BrightPo uh, software. Um, as a last point uh, regarding our partnership, um, you have to uh, know that um, BrightPo and Minubo have had quite a big project in the last month, basically almost half a year with uh, a lot of a lot of uh, developers and uh, insights that we had to um, incorporate to perfectly tailor um, the service for the Bright Pearl um, universe, kind of, so for the requirements of the specific Bright Pearl customers. Now let me show you shortly um, some insights of how Minubo looks, feels, and what you can expect. Um, here we are seeing the basic, uh, the first view you will have in the app. Um, in this part, you see the dashboards. In the dashboard, uh, including several widgets, which um, you can always move around and, and switch, uh, reconnect, and uh, build new ones. Um, on the upper hand, you see the dashboard, dashboard manager, which um, gives you the opportunity to create your own dashboards and include whatever widget you, you like. It's very quick and easy to use. And you can see from this, for example, that uh, you have a lot of flexibility. So kind of plug and play. You can build your own dashboard as you want. You can use pre-configurated dashboards. But um, the flexibility with the data you want uh, it will always be available. And you can very easily build that up. Um, you can. Um, share dashboards with every other user that uh, also has an account in your company. Um, so you don't need to, um, well, complicatedly transfer any information. You can always take that easy and hand that over, and you're always all seeing the same data. Um, also, you can um, have uh, configure that um, dashboards or information are emailed regularly to any email account you want. So that, uh, for example, um, certain units or heads of or a CEO is going to receive um, 
the information in the report he wants um, whenever, whenever needed automatically. Um, what you're seeing here as well are several pre-configured dashboards. Um, they're grouped for um, certain, certain um, departments or certain requirements you might have. Um, looking at the first one, we have this uh, first dashboard, which gives you quite a general overview. I'm not going to read through all the details here, but uh, I'll give you the opportunity to have a short look. We have that as the first dashboard uh, we are going to present, which was prepared especially for um, the Bradpel universe, the Bradpel customer, giving you a general retail overview. Um, you will have a basic impression by looking at the figures. Uh, it's a lot bigger as well, but uh, Time is uh, a little bit short, so I'm not going to run through the whole one. Uh, if you have any detailed uh, interests or requirements, um, you can always, I really recommend you to uh, get in touch with uh, Bright Pearl and um, get a, a date for having a full, full scale presentation and answers to your specific requirements as they are going to offer uh, whenever you require. Um, as well, we have as I said, many different dashboards which already give you a lot of uh, our best practice experiences from almost 10, uh, 10 years in the business. Um, this is another example. That's the predefined one uh, regarding controlling. As well, I'm not going to go through the details. Um, you always have an explanation of the definitions in the widget help, which uh, when it's about looking at data can be quite helpful because definitions and uh, time, time scales scale with everything can differentiate quite, quite largely. But not to go too deep into the big presentation, which will be individual for you. Um, let's look at the, another, uh, another option you have here. We have the report manager. The reports are pre-configured, and um, you have a very big quantity of them. Um, Joe is going to, uh, to show you very shortly to show you reports which <coughs> are um, exclusively built for BrightPel, uh, which was part of our project in the last month. Uh, I'm going to show you a very basic but also very uh, nice uh, report just for giving a first impression. This is the report, sorry, the report break even analysis by channel. Um, once more, loading it once more, you're right. So, what do we have here? Um, as Minubo uh, and Brightpearl can, can with if you take the marketing um, module, which is uh, part of uh, the more premium um, version, you can you can order in the future. Um, you you will see that we have the whole data the customer is generating over the whole um, process of um, coming into the web page, um, shopping, moving around um, and uh, in the order management system, etc., regarding returns, etc. as well. So, looking at it shortly, we start by showing you the traffic. It's demo data, so it's not always complete. You can see an overview here. We continue by showing you the demand side. So, for example, you will see the unit ordered here. You will see the well, you can see the net, uh, for example, net discounts, but also in the end, the net demand. When you continue, you can see the net sales, and in the end, net sales including fees. But economically, it's very important, of course, to discount, uh, dis, uh, dis subtract the return rates. So we show the return rates here and the economical results of that. So in the end, you can see the net net sales here. Um, very important as well, of course, um, from the Bright Pearl universe, the information of the net cost of goods, um, which, of course, we have to subtract from the uh, sales figures, so we get the net net profit. Um, in the results, we also have to, to subtract the cost of marketing which uh, also are um, pulled into the system. So in the end, uh, you're coming down to the operating profit. So basically, almost all the costs that could be relevant for your business decision um, are shown in this report. 
you also have the option if you want to look into more detail. So, for example, I want to know how is affiliate X epsilon um, performing. I can, as I have the um, as I have the uh, different uh, categories up here, I can look into clicking. I can look into the affiliates, and I see here which affiliates am I using. All right, Affiliate Xanox, and for those specifically, I can have the details here, and I can drill deeper and deeper. Um, that way finding more and more information where it's critical for me. So basically I'm entering the whole system uh, on a high level and then I can drill down and look for the problem and uh, find any, any information that is important to me. But Joe is going to tell, uh, give you some more examples and will as well, so I'm not going to go too deeply into detail here. Um, just uh, one more information. Um, here on the upper hand you're seeing the um, support zone. Um, which will um, next to, uh, together with support, uh, which is of course uh, part of the, the whole uh, system, uh, gives you a user guide, a glossary, and all the uh, webinars and other information, introduction, product videos. So a lot of information that can really give you a lot of help in understanding all the new metrics you have available and uh, making best use of them. Um, and uh, that way really getting a lot of um, effects, financial and, uh, and organizational for, for your uh, business from that new solution. Um, another part of the, um, of the system is the Acro Pivot, which is a part of what Joe is going to show you. Um, I'm going to hand over back to Joe at this point. Um, and uh, yeah, Joe, please uh, take over again. Hi, everybody. Joe again. So I'm hoping that you're able to see my screen now, which is uh, net profitability. So it's a report that we often get asked for. And I'm just going to talk about that very quickly because, as we've seen, one of the many challenges that are faced by our retailers is identifying their best customers. So um, what are their top customers and, and who should receive special discounts? Which buyers are only one-time buyers that could be persuaded to return? Um, and which customers are actually losing me money? So we can click into this kind of report to, to find out. And as you can see, this kind of report is telling us all this information. On the left, you can see the amount of orders that have been placed by a customer, and on the right and at the bottom of the screen, you can see the customer accounts in each segment. So using this particular matrix view, we can see the least profitable customers with the most orders here, which is perhaps like they're returning a lot of products, to our most profitable with the most orders here. You'll notice as well, that if I hover one over one of the categories, I'm provided with a really useful break, breakdown of um, what the profit increase would look like if I was able to increase the sales by a certain amount, so say 5, 10 or 15% on their next order. So let's say the reason I'm here is because I want to start a marketing campaign and I want to turn my one-time buyers down here into more regular customers. So I can click into this segment and I can see what the breakdown of these customers are by clicking show. It's got a small error there. Bear with me one second while I uh, refresh the page. That's okay. We'll um, we'll move on to a secondary report. So that report essentially shows us our customers. It provides us with an email address, a customer number, um, and I can filter those customers down to a certain quantity. But what this is really designed to show you is how we can export this data out to a CSV. Um, and I, so I would have customers to pass to my telesales team or a, a list to use for an email marketing campaign. However, it's the ability to export data in that way that's really powerful because we can manipulate it even further within Excel as I'm going to show you here. So 
Bright Pearl Insights comes with all the reports that you can see in the demo account, but as a result of the partnership, we've also created 10 more um, that are made with Bright Pearl users in mind. So this is one of those, um, and I, from here, am able to export to an Excel spreadsheet. And here's one I made earlier. So there are some details here that have been omitted for sensitivity reasons. But what you can essentially see is a really easy snapshot of your metrics. So I can export that via CSV or Excel. And as you can see, I'm given a really clear format in a linear style. Um, and I get some access to great metrics like average gross order value. Um, I can see average gross retail value as well. I can get a net profit rate and inventory turnover. And that's all provided um, here. So if I now go yeah. back to Bright Pearl Insights, wherever we build a high-level report like this, we've made it easy to run so that the same report at a more granular level um, can be created. So if I go to this particular tab now, this is a stock sales commitment. So this is the same information. But if I wish, I can look at the products within bikes, for example, by clicking here. And from there, um, I can see the same metrics by these 44 products. So this will be available in an Excel spreadsheet. But for the purposes of, the, of this demo, we're going to see the CSV file. Um, and from that CSV file, again, I can see some, some really great metrics, which are really useful. However, one thing I would like to point out that's relevant to a lot of Bright Pearl users is that we can now see a sell-through rate. So that concludes the in-app portion of the demo. Um, however, a large part of using Bright Pearl Insights is this Excel plugin. So in any Excel document, I can set up a connection to my data, and we can use that to create even more reports. So I'm going to bring in Will from Velobrands now to talk through how he manages his. You can you hear us, Will? Hi there. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, really loud and clear. So talk us through what it is that we can see on the screen now. Um, this is sort of a, an initial top level report that we run just to see literally which of our accounts in a given sort of sales channel is spending the most. And yeah, so that obviously quick and easy, you can see how they've been doing over over time. That could be by month or by they've got it by year and this one, but it yeah, you yeah, it allows you to quickly identify your top performing customers and put them in the special care category and make sure that they stay there and get well looked after because obviously they're making the most money. Excellent. So the and next um, tab we've got is... So that's, Sorry, Will, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, this is a kind of a, a more detailed drill down. As you, put, as you can see, we've sort of added a little nice explanatory box there for exactly how we interpret it. But again, you can use the filters top left to split it by either yeah, the customer itself or the sales channel or the account owner. So really easy to manipulate and drill down and slice it up how you want. And again, you can see we've got it, this one's over month and over year. So you can see who's underachieving in each category, who's overachieving. Um, obviously, there can be extenuating circumstances for why sales have dropped off or increased. But yeah, it's a good, it's a good, good easy report for sort of picking out problems that need to be acted on. Excellent. So, yeah. All about sales in units year on year. Yeah, I mean, again, that's a similar report to the previous one, but whereas the, the previous slide was to do with, yeah, the sales value in pounds sterling, this is the actual number of units. So it's, it's a similar report, but just, yeah, slightly, until we interpret it slightly differently. Um, obviously, you hope that units are up, if there's a promotion running, and again, there can be various reasons for why numbers are different, but again, similar report to the previous one, and you can easily slice it and filter it according to your needs. So that's good. Excellent. So orders by month, it's obvious what that shows, but how, what, how do you kind of use that data? Um, we prefer, it's a good indicator of customers' health, because we would rather they were ordering, ordering regularly, and you'd obviously hope that was consistently growing over time or certainly within seasonal variations but 
if you suddenly see three or four months of solid ordering and you get to the high point of the season and they've stopped ordering, then that's a big alarm bell in terms of why they go in the opposite way to the rest of the market. So it's kind of a health check, really. Mm. And again, you, we filter this across category, across brand, and yeah, just try and try and pick out um, yeah anomalies, really things that should be happening that aren't. And yeah, yeah, it cuts both ways, obviously. Mm. But yeah, again, it's a handy a health check is is basically the main sort of benefit of that one. Excellent. And what about spend by month? Um, again, yeah, similar to the previous one, and yeah, you want to see it going up. And again, it's, yeah, it's, it's another kind of a health check report, really. But um, it does when you use it in conjunction with the orders by month, you can see where that spend is. And again, I'd like to see it spread over in a reasonable proportion across all the brands. But you might actually find that all that spend is going into one particular category. So that obviously means that they're doing well in one thing, but they might be missing out on others, or they're not representing our brands fully or properly, or they've just decided they've got a few favourites and they're just driving those. So, yeah, again, it, it very tailored to our business and how we interpret it and how our industry works, but I'm sure that many businesses could benefit in a similar way. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. and, and finally, the last tab we got here is outgoing calls priority list. So can you talk us through that a little bit? Uh, yeah, if you scroll up, you can see that each column is the week number of the year. If you scroll up and then scroll across to the right, a bit forward, scroll you can sort of see where the gaps in ordering are. And just, yeah, basically it shows, it shows spend by brand by week. So if you can see that somebody hasn't ordered something for six weeks and you expect them to order in two weeks, then it highlights them as a priority for a call and the sales team can get on the phone or go and visit in store. And uh, again, it also gives you a quick, easy to sort of assess idea of their purchasing patterns. So you can see on the row 10, in week three they spent 36 quid, week 853. So yeah, it's going up nicely. And that kind of fits in with the seasonal profile of our business as well. So again, just another good good um, yeah, indicator of activity, our customers' business health, and again, how well they're behaving. Really. So that's kind of how we use it. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks for talking us through that, Will. So, no worries. My pleasure. Can you just talk us through quickly the benefits of, of using Bright Pearl Insights? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's only been the last year that we've kind of got a bit more data focused and for me, number one, robust and consistent data. You, you do the legwork once, and then because of the integration, it updates every night. So you've always got fresh, fresh data that's accurate. And actually, I think the integration more than pays for itself on a weekly basis in terms of man hours saved, manually having to churn through, to do it manually, trying to integrate various different data dumps from Bright Pearl. It just took me forever, and I always got a different result each time. There was no consistency, so you can't compare like for like if you're not being consistent. Um, yeah, and that kind of covers number two as well, really, because the um, because the insights are accurate and consistent. You can make a much better informed decision and hopefully take some positive action. And then, yeah, again, kind of touched on the third point, but we we are constantly trying to narrow down what it is that are the real, the really very important sort of um, reports for the business because they're clearly, as of any big data set, you can get a lot of noise and a lot of distractions and you might you might spend a lot of time focusing on something that actually someone else, a competitor, may well have far bigger influence over. So you could, there'd be no point in obsessing about that particular report if, in fact, the only thing that affects it is what other people do. So it's, for us, it's trying to keep going, keep going, find out what are the reports over which our actions have the most influence and the least affected by the wider market conditions. And then, um, yeah, it's kind of an ongoing process, but that's a big one. The, the, the integration with Manuba and Bright Hub definitely gives you the power to, uh, to be able to do that. And uh, in a more 
disciplined way, I guess, because yeah, it is consistent, it is robust, and it is set in stone. Once you set those reports, they've been changed. Unless you do something silly yourself, you should actually be on quite a good sort of process. You just have to stick at it. So yeah, I'd say they're three big things. Excellent. Thanks very much, Will. So that sort of yeah, that's excellent. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I mean, that brings us to the end of the kind of the official demo. Will, if you'd stay on the line just for a minute while we we take some questions. Thanks everybody for coming. And if there are any questions that you haven't posted already, we'd love, love to take a minute to um, to collate those now. So um, there'll be a, a few minutes of silence just while we wait to to collate those questions, and we'll be right back with the Q and A. Okay, thanks for waiting, everyone. Um, if presenters could unmute themselves so that we can um, we can have a full Q and A session, I've got a, a couple of questions here to to go through. So, we've got a first question, um, which is probably most relevant for for you, Dominic Ingmar, and it's how regularly is my data updated? This is every night. So we we pull uh, fresh data every night out of the system and and uh, update us, update them. So they are available. Uh, when you when you come in the office at the mor in the office at the morning, you have fresh data from the days before. So we don't do in a daily daily update every night. Excellent, thank you. Um, we've got a question from John, which is um, breakdown on category and brands within Brightpool Insights. Is is that available as well? Category and brands. Both of it is available as attributes of the product, of course. Excellent, thank you. And, I think um, we have seen one, one again. I think we have seen some of them also on uh, Will's example report. Mm. There were categories and brands available. So. Excellent, excellent. And uh, we've got another question. Is it possible that I could start a trial with some of my own data? Yeah, it is, of course. Yeah, we, I mean, just get in contact with with the bright, the bright person support, and they they arrange everything that. They yeah, exactly. That's something we're we're really happy to help with, so we can arrange a a more kind of deeper dive demo that's uh, with some of your data and is is really kind of bespoke around you and some of the reports that that you want to see. So I got a question from Mike, who's saying it's great to be able to set see reports that are set up on the dashboard. Um, but is it possible to set targeted or benchmarked reports? So as an example of that, net profit for month versus, say, a, against a target. Okay, yes, we have, we have, we have the opportunity to import uh, budget or, or uh, forecasting data. So uh, I think uh, this is possible, yes, but need some extra extra interface thanks yes. Dominic so another question here does this offer any kind of inventory dashboard so aging or overstocked products so can you please rephrase I'm not sure I got this yeah no problem so Using Bright Pearl Insights, does this offer any kind of particular inventory dashboard? So, is there somewhere where we can see products that are maybe overstocked or aging products? Yes, of course. 
we have we have we have uh, inventory data included, and so uh, we have uh, explicit measures of of, of uh, inventory turnover rate, uh, sales through rates, and so on. So you can definitely go into this matter and, and gain insights out of it. Yes. Excellent. Any other questions, guys? I do have a question here um, around the accountancy. Um, so can that data be brought in? So this is done via sales and orders. So the accountancy element of this really isn't required. So yes is the answer. Any other questions, guys? Well, it looks like that's it. So um, thanks very much, everybody, for attending the webinar. Thanks to the panelists. Um, and if anybody does want to get in contact and arrange uh, a demonstration, our details are available on this slide. Or you can contact me, joe.mitchell at brightpearl.com, for a more personalized demonstration. Thanks very much for attending.